Hello everyone and welcome back. So we already learned what is Laplace transformation. We see several standard results, then some theorems and their applications. Now in this particular uh, lecture, we are going to learn what is inverse Laplace transformation. So this part is very simple provided if you uh, know the Laplace transformation very well because they are just uh, vice versa. So what is inverse Laplace transformation? Since we know that uh, what is Laplace transformation of f of t? Laplace transformation of f of t is how much? f of s, right? f of s. Then we can write easily like this, na? f of t equals to what? L inverse of f of s. This is very simple. So we all know that Laplace transformation of a function is denoted like this, f of s. Then if you, then if you see, or if you want to find f of t, then it will be, uh, we have to write like this, L inverse of what? F of S. So, inverse of this particular function F of S is called what? Laplace transformation. Okay. Is called Laplace transformation. Here F of T is called inverse Laplace transformation of mention of what? Which function? F of S. Okay, and this uh, operator that is L inverse, this is called inverse Laplace transformation operator. Op operator. So L is uh, Laplace transformation operator and L inverse is inverse Laplace transformation operator. So, I think you remember this uh, property, right? Uh, standard result. What is a Laplace transformation of t to the power n? It is n factorial divided by s to the power n plus 1. Then, uh, what is L inverse of? So, let us shift L to uh, on the right hand side. So, L inverse of n factorial by s to the power n plus 1 will be what? t to the power n. So, this implies L inverse of n plus 1 is nothing but t to the power n by n factorial. So, this is the inverse Laplace transformation of 1 by s to the power n plus 1. So, like this we can find the other properties also. This is very simple. Okay. So, <coughs> let us see the standard results here. So, like uh, Laplace some standard results. So, you all know that what is Laplace transformation of 1? Laplace transformation of 1 is 1 by s. So, here inverse Laplace transformation of 1 by s will be what? 1. So, that's why I said if you know all these, uh, all the uh, properties or, st or standard results from uh, Laplace transformation, then this, in, this you can easily write. Then Laplace transformation of t. So, that also I think you remember it is 1 by what? s square. So, inverse Laplace transformation of 1 by s square will be what? t. And just now we see that what is uh, Laplace transformation of what? 1 by s to the power n plus 1. So, this is n factorial, sorry, t to the power n divided by what? n factorial. Yeah, okay, n can be any natural number. Then, what is Laplace transformation of e to the power a t? e to the power t. It is 1 divided by s minus a. So, here what we will get? You will get inverse Laplace transformation of this is inverse sorry. Yeah. So, inverse Laplace transformation of 1 by s minus a will be our e to the power a t. Right? Then we have uh, Laplace transformation of sin a t. So, Laplace transformation of sin a t is what? a divided by s square plus a square. So, if you want to find the inverse Laplace transformation of 1 by a square plus a square, that we have to write like this, sin a t by a. Then Laplace transformation of cos a t. So, what is the formula? It's s divided by a square plus a square. So, inverse Laplace transformation of s by a square plus a square will be cos a t. Okay. Then there are two more like Laplace transformation of sine hyperbolic at. 
so it is a divided by s square minus a square so inverse laplace transformation of 1 by s square minus a square will be sin hyperbolic a t divided by a and then cos hyperbolic a t is s divided by s square minus a square so we have it will be inverse Laplace transformation of will be what cos hyperbolic a t so these are the standard results that you have to uh, remember so as you see very simple first time writing that Laplace transformation so automatically these things comes to your mind oh this will be the inverse uh, Laplace transformation of all these related functions okay then we have some functions also so i think you still remember that what is the first uh, theorem linear property or theorem or property is linear property okay linear property so what it says if f uh, f1 of s and f2 of s these are what two laplace transformation of r laplace laplace transformation of Of suppose two different function one is f1 of t and what f2 of t so that is laplace of f1 of t will be our f1 of s and laplace of f2 of t will be what f2 of s so this is what you can write then our f1 of t will be inverse laplace of okay f1 of s and f2 of t will be inverse laplace of f2 of s so what the linear property says if you write like this i was l inverse of c1 f1 of s plus c2 f2 of s so what you can write we have to simply separate it okay so it will be c1 l inverse of f1 of s plus c2 l inverse of f2 of s okay so in uh, in laplace transformation you already prove all these things so in the same way you can prove this one it's very simple then property number two is uh, first shifting property so i think you still remember first shifting property first shifting property so what it says you remember so l inverse of f of s is what f of t initially in laplace transformation what we are going to write l of f of t is f of s now from here in inverse laplace transformation just we have to write the reverse then then l inverse of s f of s minus a will be our e to the power a t f of t okay e to the power t f of t so this is our first shifting property or first translational property so how we prove this one uh, in laplace transformation you remember so there we wrote like this f of s is equals to what zero to infinity e to the power minus s t and then what f of t dt so here in place of s let us replace s by s minus a so it will become e to the power minus a e to the power s minus a t and then what f of t dt right f of t dt so this you can separate e to the power uh, 0 to infinity e to the power minus st then from here no one more term will become which is e to the power a t f of t dt so suppose this is f of t now so this will be our what this term we can write laplace transformation of e to the power a t and then what f of t take l on the left hand side so it will be your l inverse f of s minus a is equals to e to the power a t what f of t so all the proofs are very simple okay so this this way i'm not going to prove all the other properties just i'm simply write the writing the property huh? so you kindly uh, do the uh, proofs 
by uh, after going to the uh, theorems in Laplace transformation. Then uh, second shifting property. Second shifting property. So what it says? So L inverse of f of s is equals to what f of t. Then L inverse of e to the power minus a t f of s will be equals to what g of t. I think you remember what is g of t, right? Where that we have to specify here. G of t is just I think still remember what is g of t? f of t minus a if t is greater than a and it is zero if t is what less than a so i'll suggest you kindly prove try to prove this one after seeing uh, that particular lecture in laplace transformation and then property four property four is our is our what is shifting property uh, second shifting property then change of scale property change of scale property so what we have there again l inverse of f of s is how much f of t then l inverse of f of a s so what we are doing now in place of in place of um, there no in Laplace transformation, this will be like this. It's 1 by A, F of S by A. I think you still remember this property. So the similar kind of thing we are going to do here or write here by inserting one A in F, small f. So right side will be 1 by A, exactly same. Now it is capital F of what? T by A. There it was small f of S by A. Here it is capital F of T by A. Okay. So this is A should be greater than 0. Okay, A will be greater than 0. So, this proper, particular property is called what? Change of a scale property. Then there is one more theorem which is uh, inverse uh, Laplace transformation of derivative. Inverse Laplace transformation of derivatives. Okay, inverse Laplace transformation of derivatives. So this particular no uh, Laplace transformation of derivative, this I made in Laplace transformation separately. So kindly go through that particular lecture and then you can prove this one. So this is also very simple. Again, L inverse of f of s is what? f of t. Then L inverse of, if there is any t like this, t to the power n, sorry it's not t to the power n l inverse of f to the power n n means number of derivative okay f to the power n of s we can write this one like this minus 1 to the power n t to the power n and then what f of t okay on that particular lecture it is uh, laplace transformation of t to the power n into f of t okay t to the power n f of t so that will be our minus 1 to the power n and then f to the power n. So you remember this, this is one number of derivative f to the power n, or you can write like this also, otherwise it looks like power. So there is one more theorem which is called convolution theorem. So for partic that particular um, uh, theorem, so I'll may make one separate video because that is very interesting. Sometimes proof is also coming. So I'm not including that in this particular lecture. So I'll make uh, one separate lecture on convolution theorem. So these properties and standard results, finally you go through this uh, properly. So in our next lecture, we'll do some uh, applications of these standard results and what uh, these properties. Okay. So I hope uh, you'll understand this. Uh, what is the inverse Laplace transformation and what are their properties and standard results. So thank you for watching till now. So if you uh, like my videos, kindly share and uh, hit the subscription bell.